This country is the last absolute monarchy in Africa. Today we're looking at Eswatini, also called Swaziland. Join us in this adventure through the vibrant cultural festivals, like the Inkwala ceremony, where tradition comes alive in colorful displays and rituals. Nestled between South Africa and Mozambique, the Kingdom of Eswatini is a small nation with a wide range of landscapes. We'll start our journey in the Western High Veld, a high-altitude plateau that rises up to 6,000 feet. With rolling grasslands and temperate climates, this cattle grazing region provides stunning vistas of Eswatini's countryside. In the shadow of the tall peak of Mount Bulembu, discover mountain streams, pine forests, and quaint villages. Heading east, we descend through the Middle Veld's mountains and valleys. Subtropical atmospheres foster sugarcane and citrus farms across lush river basins. The great Usutu River carves through the fertile lowlands. Further east, reach the Lovell's subtropical savannas and bushlands where majestic wildlife roam. While small in size, Eswatini's landscapes offer incredible diversity. Mist-shrouded peaks, verdant rainforests and sprawling grass savannas exist side by side. As we explore the natural beauty and resources sustaining its communities, we gain an appreciation for this often overlooked African kingdom. The country may be tiny, but its environments and ecosystems harbor magnificent treasures waiting to be discovered. Eswatini, a small nation located in Southern Africa, is home to a population of around 1.2 million people, according to World Bank estimates. The Swazi people, who make up over 95% of the population, have inhabited the region since at least the 16th century. A small minority of the population is of European descent, largely from British and Africana settlers during the colonial period. There are also very small numbers of Zulu and Tsonga people. Despite this diversity, the Swazi nation maintains a strong national identity. Christianity is the dominant religion in Eswatini today. Estimates suggest over 90% of the population adheres to Christianity, while around 3% follow traditional Swazi religion and customs. Of Christians, Protestants make up the majority at over 60% of the total population. Roman Catholics account for around 20%. The official languages of Eswatini are Swati and English. Swati, part of the Bantu language family, is the mother tongue of most citizens. Under British colonial rule, English became entrenched as the language of government, higher education and commerce. While English usage declined after independence, it remains an important second language. Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland, boasts a culinary tradition that combines indigenous ingredients, techniques and influences from its neighboring regions. Sishwala is a traditional porridge-like dish that is a staple in Eswatini. It's made from maize meal cooked with water to create a thick consistency. Sishwala is often served as a side dish or as a base for various meals, paired with vegetables, meats or sauces. Kwangekatsi refers to the edible stomach lining sourced from agricultural animals such as sheep, cows, pigs and goats, with beef being the most popular choice. Beef tripe, available in four variations, comes from the four distinct digestive chambers found in a cow. Ligusha, a highly nutritious vegetable, boasts exceptional levels of protein, fiber and vitamin C. To prepare it, young leaves are picked and cooked over gentle heat. During the cooking process, the leaves are crushed resulting in a dense, slightly slimy texture. The early history of Eswatini, also known as Swaziland, is not well documented. The earliest inhabitants were Khoisan hunter-gatherers. During the Bantu migrations, 
Bantu-speaking clans moved into the region around the 3rd century AD. The Dlamini clan was the first to settle in the area, followed by the Ndwandwe clan. These groups established the kingdom that became the nucleus of the Swazi nation. In the early 19th century, Sobuza, the first, became king of the Swazis. He started the process of expanding Swazi territory, pushing out other clans. His successor, Miswati II, continued this expansion across the Pongola River into lands occupied by the Ndwandwe. This brought the Swazis into conflict with white settlers and the South African Republic. Despite tensions, King Banzeni allowed Boer farmers to settle in Swazi territory. After he died in 1889, a dispute broke out over succession. The Boers backed Mbanzeni's son, while the British supported Miswati II's young son. The British placed the kingdom under their protection as a protectorate in 1894. Under British rule, Eswatini was governed through dual monarchy, with the British controlling external affairs, but allowing the Swazi kings to rule internally. In 1921, Sobhusa II became king while still a minor. He soon began pushing for independence, which Britain rejected. Sobhusa founded the Imbokodvo National Movement, which led a campaign of civil disobedience in the 1950s. Finally, in 1968, Swaziland was granted independence and constitutional rule under Sobuza was restored. After independence, Sobuza repealed the constitution and banned political parties in 1973. He declared himself the absolute monarch of Eswatini. Under his rule, Swaziland faced severe economic decline and government corruption. Sobhuza died in 1982, leaving behind 70 wives and over 600 children. In 1986, Miswati III took over the throne at the age of 18. He has continued his father's absolute rule while facing protests calling for democratic reforms. Eswatini has struggled with poverty, inequality, and the highest HIV AIDS rate in the world. While pro-democracy groups continue to protest for multi-party elections, reforms have been minimal under Miswati's reign. The kingdom of Eswatini may be small, but its economy has some fascinating quirks. Our journey starts with agriculture, the backbone of the country's economy. Watch farmers nurture lush fields of sugarcane. Eswatini's sweetest export. Cattle graze on the high veld grasslands where traditional Swazi beef recipes are still cooked over open fires. Yet cotton and tobacco also remain key crops transported across the countryside's dirt roads. Moving on, we discover Eswatini's mining and quarrying activities. The Nguenya mine extracts handsome crystals of iron-rich red ore its mountainous caverns once hid Eswatini's early inhabitants. Now the mines provide iron, granite and diamonds to fuel local industries. Despite lower development, Eswatini's currency is tied to South Africa's rand, bringing surprising stability. And seven out of ten Swazis live in customary rural homesteads guided by traditional values of community. From agriculture to mining to currency, tiny Eswatini delivers fascinating economic diversity. Its traditional customs offer lessons for adapting in a modern world. The nation may be small, but it thinks big when it comes to creative industries and sound fiscal policy. The small nation of Eswatini has a rich culture steeped in unique traditions and ceremonies. Three highlights provide a window into this kingdom's spiritual customs and creative spirit. First is the vital role of Sangomas, traditional healers and advisors. These respected practitioners use herbs, divination and ancestral wisdom to treat ailments, provide counsel and connect with spiritual forces. The Sangomas link the Swazi people to their heritage. The Inkwala ceremony is an intricate ritual honoring the king 
and bringing good fortune for the next harvest. Experience dancing, chanting and offerings to the ancestors. At the heart of Inkwala is unity. The king symbolically relinks with his people after a period of seclusion and purification. Finale, witness the Umlega or Reed dance where thousands of young women gather to dance for the Swazi Queen Mother. They carry cut reeds representing their virtue and hopes for the future. Umlanga celebrates community, womanhood, and the beauty of Eswatini's culture. From healing to harvest festivals to lively dances, Eswatini's customs reveal a social fabric rich in meaning. Spiritual practices hand wisdom through the generations, while creative arts nourish the soul. The Swazi people keep their traditions alive with joy and pride. Their culture remains vital to national identity. Experience for yourself Eswatini's captivating heritage. You'll discover a culture still very much thriving, built on foundations centuries old. A bright future can emerge when a nation takes pride in its past. If you enjoyed this video on Eswatini, you'll love this next one.